you, you can tell very much about um, evolution or stuff like this. But for me, for just for the photos, it was the form and color of animal feet. I'm, I'm not the photographer who is always showing different behavior from animals. So I'm always trying to show the beauty of the animals and nice forms and nice colors. And I'm trying to, to show the people the beauty of nature. And as you know, they, they will only save what, what they like. And I hope they will like the animals after they, they saw my pictures. And maybe this is a little help to save the nature as well. I've always thought of myself as a sports photographer, even though in the last 20 years, I don't suppose I uh, fall into the standard sports photographer category. But I've always, since I picked a camera up in school, have enjoyed trying to find uh, some kind of magic moment in a sporting event. And in a way, it's kind of the final examination that photographers can have. Uh, there's always a challenge, whether it's a big Olympic event or a, a neighborhood ball game. There's always a challenge to a photographer to try and make a picture of sports that has both a sense of action and also is a moment and is a composition that is pleasing to look at. My action pictures in some ways are almost anti-action pictures. It's the field of play, it's in the middle of something going on, but it's, it's almost like that quietude before the real action starts. When a reader is going through a page and just turning the page one after the other, the greatest compliment I can get is that one picture might just hold their attention for an extra second. When you, as I said now, when you're speaking about violence against women, I mean, it's just immediately comes to mind that you will look at domestic violence because that is the most central issue. The young lady I photographed had been sexually abused by her stepfather and landed up having two children with him and she eventually decided enough is enough and she ran away and she went to a shelter and when she was speaking to me she said you know my mother didn't listen to me I told her it was happening and she wouldn't believe me and she turned around in her interview and said you mothers you must listen to us children and also you know you men we are innocent well, I want to keep my photography alive and myself alive. So, oh yes, you can follow a formula and put the black and white film in and, you know, continue. But I just knew if I had to be honest with myself, I wanted to find another way to, to portray this, this project. I see myself as a reportage photographer. I'm not really looking to this one iconic shot. So I'm, I'm really searching to tell a story in many photographs. And within that, I always try to be as close as possible. This is all being shot with a digital camera and, and only one lens. So um, shots get a kind of di uh, different, but still the same lookalike perspective. I think uh, this story makes it human, makes it more smaller and gives another twist to what we know about Iraq. Um, it was a story very hard to get access to. It was very difficult to, to get access to, to 
to this and, and to photograph it. But um, by doing so, I think it was very important. The story was finished uh, a month before Abu Ghraib, so at that time, especially, we didn't know this was happening in Iraq. I really want you to be close there. I want you to get as close to Iraq as you possibly can. I'm, I'm trying to drag you into the country.